probably going to be the last guy out of here, but uh, I'm sure many of you on the commission have been hearing that uh, you know, from our landlords and some citizens that South Georgia was once again experiencing deer losses due to the large number of disease. And I'm sure you recall from last year we experienced some of this, but this year our losses do appear to be more substantial. So what I put together today is a kind of brief piece about a brief background on the DCS and that sort of thing. History of South Dakota, what we're going to turn up dates and losses, and um, put our department action on the last one of this thing. We just have to go Just real briefly here, set up here for some similar stuff. Episiotic hemorrhagic disease, as we all call EHD. Um, just real briefly over what, what that disease is. Um, you know, it's episiotic, it's an outbreak of an animal disease characterized by rapid spread over a wide area, and we're definitely seeing that this year. Hemorrhagic just means profuse bleeding from ruptured blood vessels. And the disease is caused by a virus, um, an orbivirus that is spread by a vector such as a biting midge. Now, EHD and blue tongue, um, they're very similar diseases, but they're caused by genetically distinct viruses, but we call them collectively, we call them hemorrhagic disease. A vector is a biting midge. Um, again, it's in the Colcoide species. It's, uh, it's a biting fly. Uh, it has several names, but uh, because it is an insect, the disease itself is seasonal, as insects are. And it usually occurs in, in late summer, early fall, is when we start to see, see effects of EHD. Now, three forms of EHD. There's paracute, which uh, kills, kills the deer actually within a couple hours. Um, there's the acute form, which um, probably most of the deer in, in South Dakota have, um, we believe, but uh, the deer die within two to three days. And there's a chronic form, um, which, which we may have some of that as well, but that's where the disease symptoms persist for longer duration the deer can actually die several weeks or even months post-infection. Now there's a lot of symptoms of EHD and some of these symptoms overlap with a lot of the other diseases that we could see potentially in deer in South Dakota but, but some of the symptoms are, are real characteristic um, of EHD or hemorrhagic disease. And the fever, um, um, the deer do develop a fever which is Often while you find them near a water source, they're trying to combat that fever. Um, they can be lethargic or disoriented. Swelling of the head, neck, tongue, or eyelids, that's, a, that's very characteristic of, of hemorrhagic disease. Uh, respiratory distress. Internal hemorrhaging, of course, that's another characteristic uh, sign of EHD. Bloody discharge from the nasal cavity, loss of appetite. Um, and in your more chronic forms, you start to see that uh, emaciation and um, you can actually see erosion in the dental pad, ulcers on the tongue, or, or, or lesions on the, on the room. And here's just some, some pictures of, of uh, some of the different symptoms of EHD. There's a swollen tongue on, on a paracute form. Um, on the chronic forms, this is some of the stuff that you may hear reports about from the public. Um, sometimes you have those ulcers in the tongue there. Um, interrupted hoof, hoof growth, they're not the same length. Um, so those are some of the reports you might hear. Now EHD can affect um, both our mule deer and white-tailed deer. It can also affect bighorn sheep, elk, and pronghorn. Now um, for the most part in South Dakota, um, our white-tailed deer are what they can get from EHD. About 95% of our cases probably that we deal with are white-tailed deer. Um, we do get a few mule deer, and this year we actually got a couple elk. Um, but luckily, EHD is a real problem in the main part of the hills, so we, we don't see that much with, with elk. But for the most part, it's a white-tailed deer disease. It is the most important disease for white-tailed deer in the United States, so it's not just us here in South Dakota. In fact, in the, in the southern states, um, they have EHD every year, but um, the deer seem to develop some type of immunity to it, so the losses are, are um, pretty slim. But here in the northern states, uh, usually our losses are slim, but um, because we don't see it all the time, when we do have it, sometimes it's pretty substantial. Just to give you an idea of distribution, we're not alone in this disease. It's stressed across the United States, and, and actually this year, I'll talk about it here in a minute, but there's going to be a lot more counties over here that are red too, because it does appear to be in some areas that 
um, haven't experienced it before. So what do we see for other states? Uh, Wyoming is seeing it right across the, the border for sure. Um, Nebraska, as I'm sure many of you here, they're, they're experiencing one of the worst cases of VHD that they've at least reported in recent history. Um, Iowa, too, is experiencing some pretty substantial losses. Um, the Midwest in general, like I mentioned, you know, states like Michigan and Wisconsin, which, which um, very rarely had VHD, um, if, if, if at all, are experiencing some, a, lot of, a lot of dead deer from VHD, so some interesting things going on. Um, just a note on North Dakota, last year North Dakota got hit really hard. Um, this year they've had one report so far, so um, they seem to be escaping it this year. Um, same with Minnesota. Um, last I heard, which was earlier this week, they hadn't got a report yet, so um, they're lucky. A little bit of history of us in South Dakota, at least looking back the last 10 years, we've had very few reports. Saw a few more come in in 2008, 2007, and 2008. Now, 2011 was a pretty significant year for us. Um, as I talked about last year, if you remember, we had about 1,300 deer that reported um, lost to VHD. And of course, this year, unfortunately, we're over double that already. So um, it is a concern to us. We're almost up to 2,800 uh, reported dead deer. Um, we have confirmed uh, VHD actually in 18 cases. Just to give you an idea of the distribution of, of those uh, reports, uh, Region 1, the western part of the state, um, we're looking at you know, a little over 700 reports. Region 2 in the central part, over 1,000. So Region 3, and this is something that's pretty new to South Dakota, we, we don't historically see a lot of losses in that part of the state in the southeast. Um, we're, we're darn near 1,000, so obviously that's caused us some concern in other folks as well. In Region 4, which doesn't historically see much um, they're sticking with that trend and not really seeing much, but they have had a few. Just a real quick comparison with, with where we were at last year. Um, you can see there's some real similarities, but again, um, we've seen a little bit more out west in Region 1 and, and definitely in Region 3. Um, I, know, I know a lot of you hear, hear complaints about um, county-specific losses and, and, and where you live and, and what, what we're seeing, so I just wanted to throw this up real quick. I'm not going to go through all the counties, but I did want to throw it up so you have an idea of what we've seen for reported losses. I'll just hit on the high, high, um, highlights on the high ones here in the western part of the state in Region 1. You know, Meade County is seeing the most as far as reports, and uh, along with Lawrence County in Region 2, um, Charles Mix County, Gregory County, Tripp County, that area down there in the south central part of the state. Um, we're seeing some pretty substantial um, deer losses. And then in Region 3, where we're seeing the most substantial losses would be in Bonholm, Hutchinson, and Yankton County. <laughs> um, that, that whole area right there, and I'll show some maps here in a minute, and then Region 4, not much. Um, these are just the counties where we've actually confirmed CHD as, as um, the cause of death. Um, of course, most of these um, dead deer that we get reports on, um, we don't have an opportunity to get a, a real good test on them. Um, the, <laughs> Usually you got to get the deer within less than 24 hours. 24 hours is probably too long in order to get a good sample to get tested. So, um, like you know, most of the deer we get, we're not able to sample. But once we do get a sample in the area and get a positive, we do move on and assume probably most of the deer are dying from the same disease. So here's where we're at um, as far as reports uh, this year. Again, you kind of see the distribution, south central part of the state and, and into the region three areas, some pretty heavy losses there, um, and then up over here in the, in the western part of the state. I did the same kind of map last year and just wanted to throw it up for comparisons. Um, it's pretty interesting to see that the distribution of the disease has actually changed a little bit here. You know, last year we had we had heavy losses in the central part of the state. Uh, that's where our highest number of reports were, kind of kind of went down a little bit in the south central, but, but again, this year, heaviest reports there in the western part of the state, and, and just overall, you can tell, just more reports, so we are seeing heavier losses. This just gives you an idea of, of, of those reports, um, of all the ones that we've done. Um, some, some of those dots can obviously be more than one deer. Um, they're a pretty good distribution in different parts of the state. I did want to highlight and talk about Real briefly, Hutchinson, Bond, Home, and Yankee County. Um, again, that's an area that where we don't traditionally see losses to VHD, so it does cause some concern. But um, we do have a lot of areas that um, we've, we've had reported dead deer 
in, in those areas. So I um, just wanted to throw that up. Like I mentioned before, in Nebraska, there are over 5,000 now. I did talk to one of the guys down there the other day. Um, again, this is a record high for Nebraska, too. As you can see, you know, first they border us right here. They're, they're seeing some heavy losses on our South Dakota Nebraska border. So what can you do to control, prevent EHD? And, and really, there, there is no wildlife management tools and strategies that you can do to control it. Um, there are no vaccines available. Um, and really, the only thing that controls it, like many of our things, is, is Mother Nature. And luckily, Mother Nature is going to kick in here this week and, and knock back that bug pretty good here. And uh, at least in the western part of the state, we're hoping here and, and um, hoping here in the next few days in the eastern part of the state as well. So that will give us some relief. It doesn't mean the dead deer reports aren't still going to come in. Um, we can still lose day, um, deer you know, at least a few days after that or more. But uh, it should curtail most of the heavy losses. So the impacts, um, of course, it can be highly variable. Um, you know, some of the literature suggests usually it's below 25% or maybe even up to 50%. Um, it, it's pretty hard to quantify. That's the problem. You know, you, you can pick up 100 deer in a county, and, and there really isn't a, a scientific way to say how many deer that represents that actually died from the disease. So um, it, is, it is important to keep track of the distribution and the severity, but, but to, to pull up a number after that is very difficult. Um, one thing that they have shown, though, is that repeated outbreaks um, usually don't limit population growth, and that's probably because they do develop antibodies that probably give them some protection the next year from the disease, like we probably saw in the central part of the state. And a lot of times we'll hear that, um, you know, it's because we had so many deer, of course, we're not hearing those complaints as much as we used to, but a lot of times you'll hear it's because of because of the deer densities that's causing this disease and really it's, it's, it's more a factor of the environmental conditions that are, that are good for the vector or, or the biting niche. So as far as management, there, there, like I said, there's not a whole lot from a management standpoint we can do to control the disease, but there are some things we can do to try and, try and limit the impacts on our deer herd. Uh, of course, the first thing we want to do is, is try to get a handle on what we have for deer losses. So we, we record everything we get from the public and we try to observe verify and validate what those losses are. Um, we do test dead animals um, to try and verify that it's EHD and not something else that might cause concern. Uh, of course, we're going to consider these losses next year in our season setting process. Um, those counties that have heavy losses, I'm sure we're going to be backing off or at least considering how that's going to affect our, our deer population trends. Um, of course, another thing we can do is consider license adjustments and refunds. Um, as, as most of you are aware, I'm sure we've already done that in, in West River. In, in several units, so I'll talk about those in a minute here. But we have pulled leftover unsold licenses already in, in several units, West River. And we've also offered statewide refunds to any deer hunter in any deer season that hasn't started already. Um, so um, we've, we've been pretty generous with the refunds if they want to get their license back in on deer hunt this year. And then, of course, you guys are going to be talking about emergency rule action to further limit licenses. <laughs> I did want to point out that, you know, landlords still have options to control land. You know, a lot of our units are private land, um, the vast majority of them are, and um, they still have options, and without a doubt, we're going to have landlords that are closing their land and not allowing hunting, and I think that's the right thing to do if they, they want to build the herd up. Um, but within the, you can go 20 miles down the road, and, and you can have landlords that haven't experienced any, any disease losses, and they're still going to want to have a season and want to have some harvest on, on their land, so I'm sure they'll keep it open. This is what we did for, for West River Deer. Just want to recap. We, we um, pulled the unsold licenses after the second draw for Mead, Jackson, Bennett, and, and Gregory County. I don't need to go over all the numbers, but for Mead County, that resulted in about a 40% reduction in the antlerless only type of licenses. For Jackson County, we removed about 23% of the antlerless only type of licenses. Bennett County, that would be 52%, and Gregory County, 33%. So. All, all said, we removed about 422 licenses or, or over 1,100 tags. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of background and information on where we're at today. And if any questions, of course, a lot of our disease information comes from the Southeast Cooperative down there and the southern states. They do a lot of stuff on EHD, so I just want to give them a little credit. <laughs>